everyone. Given the recent angst around Star Wars, I was curious about how the film that started it all held up. So I recently watched the digitally remastered version of Star Wars, the original, the OG, released in 1977. And this film really did define the way movies are made. 50 years later, though, does it still hold up as the cornerstone of the iconic Star Wars franchise, given how much the universe has filled out over the decades? Or is the memory of what Star Wars once was all that we have left of it today? That's what I want to dig into. But please, first give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more because there are more coming. Thank you so much. George Lucas's Star Wars really is the story of Luke Skywalker, a young farm boy whose family purchases these two droids, R2-D2 and C-3PO, which kind of draw him into the Galactic Rebellion to protect the stolen plans that these droids are carrying for this new weapon called the Death Star. And that's when the real adventure begins. The opening scene is iconic, creating the sense of grandeur and tension from the yellow scrolling text that gives us a quick history of what's happened to this point, to the sweeping starscape behind it, and then the massive Star Destroyer that fills the screen and just roars to life with its engine sending chills down your spine. It's a moment that never fails to disappoint. But from a modern audience's perspective, space is silent. And we hear the laser cannons as well, firing upon Princess Leia's starship. And again, space is silent. And yet, this scene still works today because it sets the mood, making the universe feel feel immersive and big and loud and dangerous. This is a moment when it's not about realism, it's about spectacle. And that's what Star Wars brings together seamlessly is story plus spectacle in the right way, in the right places. The same is true of Darth Vader's first appearance from the moment he strides into that smoke-filled hallway filled with frightened rebel soldiers, his black cape kind of swirling behind him. You instantly understand the power dynamics at play. Without a single word, we know exactly who he is, who is on the good side and who's on the bad side and what is at stake. Within the first 10 minutes the entire film's trajectory is established and executed with masterful precision. It's one of the best examples of tight, effective storytelling out there. This is how you set up a film. The most fascinating thing about rewatching Star Wars today, with all the knowledge of the broader universe, is how much richer those key moments of conflict are for these characters. There are so many little moments in the film that we had no idea about the first time we watched it, but they are now packed with meaning, layered with moments of tension and, and joy and poignancy. The scene when Vader confronts Leia, they clearly know each other from their work and their interactions with the Senate. There is a familiar disdain between them that echoes down through the timeline back to the Clone Wars as we learned how important family is and was to Anakin. Now, here he stands with his daughter, a woman who looks so much like Amidala that I cannot help but to praise George Lucas for casting Natalie Portman as Padme. Anakin's fear of losing those he loves is largely what drove him to the dark side and his hope for saving his son is what brought him back. We know Anakin today on a level that grounds Vader as a character, creating so much more emotional 
and mental tension than existed when the film was first made. And yet, all that tension is there because the cast was exceptional. This was an exceptional collection of actors. Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker still captures that perfect balance of youthful idealism and frustrated ambition and hope. Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi brings a subtlety to his performance, which culminates in his final fight with Darth Vader when he gives just this faint little sad smile before raising his lightsaber, sacrificing himself to save Luke and Leia, which we now know. It's in that tiny gesture that he tells us so much about his character's past and the weight of his choices that resonate across generations, across actors, and across storylines. Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia remains one of the strongest characters in cinematic history. Maybe I'm just biased, but I don't think so. I think she is one of the strongest characters in cinematic history. When you rewatch her scenes confronting Vader, especially knowing her backstory and the events from Rogue One and or Aunt Kenobi, it adds even more weight to her performance. And Harrison Ford as Han Solo, what can I say? He is a master of his craft. Han's transformation into a hero by the end of the film is such a satisfying character arc especially when you look back at Han's choices in Solo and how he dies trying to save his son. It's all so poignant. James Earl Jones and Dave Prowse, they come together as Darth Vader, creating one of cinema's greatest villains. From his first scene, he exudes menace and control, but his true depth emerges through key moments like his confrontation with Obi-Wan and his relentless pursuit of the rebels. It all tracks with the Anakin Skywalker we know, as well as the Vader we know. As strong as the story and characters are in Star Wars, there are also some choices that just actually don't hold up very well. For instance, having Obi-Wan reveal himself as a Jedi in the cantina on Tatooine when he chopped off that patron's hand with his lightsaber, it just feels wrong given what we know about how the Empire hunted the Jedi down, killing them. Obi-Wan hid himself for days decades only to publicly reveal himself at a time when stormtroopers have locked down the spaceport and he's got Luke with him right there. It's a small moment, but it stands out as a character choice that doesn't fully fit within the established lore and the canon for his character because of some story choices that were made earlier on. You know, there is some argument here that they should have known that maybe revealing himself as a Jedi in that moment wasn't the smartest thing, especially since protecting Luke's identity has been his life's work. However, it does immediately set him up as someone who knows combat and who is different than anyone else in this universe, except for maybe Vader. As for the remastered edition itself, while I appreciate... Most of the added scenes, I'm still not a fan of Greedo shooting Han first. No, that still doesn't track. I think they should get rid of that, but they're not going to. So what are you going to do? That said, I did enjoy the additional interactions between Han and Jabba, since it gives Jabba's eventual role in Return of the Jedi a bit more weight. Back in 1977, the technology felt so futuristic and it's usually the spaceships that get the most attention in this film because they have held up pretty well however it's the droids 
that were ahead of their time. They really, really were. As the quirky sidekicks, R2-D2 and C-3PO are often overlooked, as usual, but they are not just robots with personalities. They're embodied AI who are self-aware and capable of independent thought and action. Whether it was intended or not, the Star Wars droids continue to be solid and compelling characters because they map so well with modern technology and our modern expectations of what a robot can be and what a robot should be able to do. As society enters its current AI is going to kill us all phase, have we stopped to think critically about the Star Wars droids we love so much and the ethical dilemma that R2-D2 and C-3PO present regarding ethical AI? For example, R2-D2 actively deceives Luke, tricking him into removing the restraining bolt and then proceeds to manipulate events in ways that serve his own agenda of finding Ben Kenobi and then of rescuing the princess. Then there's C-3PO who chooses to lie to the Imperial Guards when they are discovered on the Death Star. These droids aren't just robots. They are individuals who aren't constrained by an ethical set of rules, just like a person, that modern society, our society, would consider as a serious or dangerous flaw in embodied AI, like the Star Wars droids. They are complex characters with autonomy, personality, and sentience who are capable of choosing to make immoral decisions, and yet they are owned by flesh and blood beings like Luke Skywalker, rather than given their freedom. It's a really interesting dilemma that they have got going on here. While this issue doesn't hold up well as part of the Star Wars story in a modern time, it does get addressed in the spinoff film Solo from 2018 with the droid L337, who often fights for droid rights. L337 is still in the main computer on the Millennium Falcon at the time of Star Wars. We know this now. We know that it's in there. And I got to say, if they do a spinoff for Rey, I would actually really love if they found a way to give L337 its voice back. In any case, the use of droids in Star Wars remains a surprisingly good reflection of our evolving relationship with intelligent machines. There are a lot of things that still hold up in this series. The biggest really is the theme of hope. It's the theme that established the entire story verse. Star Wars is built on hope and the motivation for every character in this series and in this film is either to further or to crush hope. It's what drives all of these characters forward, and it is the primary reason that the franchise endures. The undermining of this theme, like they did in The Acolyte, is the fatal flaw in any Star Wars series. Hope is the beating heart of Star Wars, and hope is tied to the Force and to the Jedi. And I think that anyone hired to write a story within this universe should be required to watch this film and to embrace the core principles of this movie or the story they're writing will just never work. One of the best features of Star Wars is how it creates a universe that feels real and lived in. George Lucas introduced the used future aesthetic where everything looks worn and yet functional. From the Millennium Falcon to the dusty streets of Tatooine, this design choice made the galaxy feel grounded and believable. The film's mix of practical effects, models, and CGI continue to hold up 
to today's standards, especially with the digital remastering that was done. As a result, Star Wars continues to stand up as a cinematic game changer for science fiction. And finally, no review of Star Wars would be complete without mentioning John Williams. His music is iconic as the film itself. The soundscape that he created personifies the grandeur and the emotion of the Star Wars saga. From the main title to the Imperial March and the throne room and the end title, John Williams' music brings the entire galaxy to life. There is a new documentary out on him on Disney+, Plus, which I will be watching and reviewing soon. I cannot wait. Star Wars A New Hope. It didn't just redefine science fiction. It transformed Hollywood. The film's groundbreaking special effects, particularly the use of practical models and early CGI, set a new standard for the spectacle of storytelling. And it pioneered the modern blockbuster, leading to the rise of merchandising and the creation of modern fandom. Star Wars showed studios how to create films that entertained the masses, paving the way for long-lasting franchises that changed the way movies were made, marketed, and experienced. Looking back at this film, with nearly five decades of Star Wars history behind us, it is astonishing to see how well it holds up. The storytelling, the characters, and the themes all remain as powerful and relevant today as they were back then. There's a reason this film launched one of the biggest franchises in cinematic history in the careers of everyone involved. If you have not watched Star Wars in a while, I highly recommend checking out the digitally remastered edition. The added scenes flesh out the story in interesting ways and the remastered visuals and sound elevate the experience. While some of the changes, yeah, some of them may still be up for debate like the Greedo thing. This version holds up well though in the modern era. So, Star Wars. Have you seen it? Have you rewatched it? How does it hold up for you? Let me know what you think. How has your perspective on it changed over time? All right, that's it for me, you guys. But be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Until next time, happy viewing and may the force be with you. See you later. Bye.